Imagine you have a website and instead of displaying all of your information on one page or view, you want to split it up and to have different pages or views. We can do this by diving into Flask routes and views. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Zek and we will be continuing this Flask series. So back to what we were saying in the beginning with having different pages instead of one big page with all of your information on it. You could have a home page, which is also referred to as an index page an about page, a payment page, and many other different kinds of pages. We want to route the users to different pages and we can do that by specifying a URL route for a website. A route in Flask is like a map that tells the application what function to execute when a specific URL is accessed. So routes determine the URLs that your application responds to. So here we have a decorator app.route with just the forward slash indicating this is our index page or our home page. And it is wrapping around this function of home, meaning this is the function that will execute whenever we access this specific route to our web page. So I'll go ahead and activate our virtual environment since for this series I am working with it. You don't have to use it. You can just run it with Python app.py and this will run it just like normal. But since I have all my dependencies in this requirements.txt file and I've installed it into my virtual environment, I'm going to go ahead and activate my virtual environment. And I'll go ahead and do this by typing .vnv slash script slash activate, since that's what I named it here, and it is going down to this file. And so it activates our virtual environment. We can see we're inside of it. We'll just go ahead and type in python app.py. And I went ahead and started up our server. And so once you've started that up, you can open up a browser and type in this address, or you can just control click it or command click it on Mac. And it will take you to this specific web page. And we can see that it prints out homepage, which if we go back to our routes over here, this homepage is with the forward slash. If we come up here, this 127.0.0.1 colon 5000 is our server address. And this is the equivalent of just adding a forward slash at the end as it defaults to that specific route. Now we can come back to the code and copy this and we'll go ahead and paste another one down here. And for this one, we'll create a different route. So we can just call this profile and we'll rename this function to profile. And we can say this is the profile page. Now, if we go ahead and save it, it auto refreshed. So we come back over here to the browser, we can do forward slash profile and press enter. And now that we're here, we are on the profile page. So cool, you know how to make static routes with Flask. Flask also lets you capture variable parts of the URL and pass them as arguments to your route functions. This is useful when you wanna create dynamic pages based on the input from a URL. So an example of this is if we want to use our profile page, but we want it specific to a specific user. So we want something like slash profile slash Zectech, and then we want other people, whoever else is on our application. And so to do this in Flask, we can create our route and add the angle brackets and in between the brackets, we can add the variable name. So in this case, instead of this specific name here, we can have the double angle brackets and have a variable name. We can call it username. And whatever you call this variable here, you want to go ahead and pass it as a parameter into this function so we can capture whatever this is in the URL and get it and do something with it. So we can do something here like capturing this username, passing it as a parameter, and then printing it out as that username's page. So we go back into the browser and we have that slash profile endpoint and we go ahead and do slash Zectech and press enter. It says we've gotten to Zectech's page. And then if we go ahead and change this to let's say banana, we are on the bananas page. Awesome. So on top of having these variables, we can also specify converters for the variables to convert them into specific types. So let's say we want to ensure that our variable username is always interpreted as a string. We can do that by coming right before the variable in the URL and type in string, and then a colon. And this will ensure that whenever we get this variable as a parameter, it always comes to us as a string. And now string is the default, so you don't really need to provide this. There are other converters we can use like int, floats, path, and the path is the same as a string, but it also accepts slashes in the variable like an actual file path, and then UUID. We can also provide multiple URL arguments in the string. So we can do this just by adding another forward slash and then another variable name. So in this case, we'll do page to get a specific page from the user. And then we'll go ahead and add these curly brackets for page and go ahead and add this as a parameter. And we'll make sure that this is an int, since we want it to be a number. 
Now this isn't actually going to matter because I'm returning it in a string anyway, so we're just going to convert it into a string. But if you wanted to do some logic based off of the integer, you can do that in between the function call and the return parameters. And so since we've added that, we can go back over to our browser and add another forward slash, and we can add a specific number. So in this case, we'll add the number 23. And we can see we've gone to bananas page 23. We can also add other things in here too, like Apple. And we can see that it did not like that because we are trying to get it as an integer and not a string. We can come up here and add something like that large number, and we've gotten to that page. Cool. And one important thing to note is it can be unsafe to receive user input and return it as HTML. This is commonly known as an injection attack. We can use the escape function from the markup safe package to avoid this kind of injection attack. So we can go up here up to our imports and we can add from markup safe import escape. And then we'll go ahead and wrap both of these parameters in parentheses and go ahead and provide these escape functions. Go ahead and press control B to get rid of the side panel. And we'll go ahead and save it. Nothing's changed, but now we are safe displaying the user's input. Routes can be set up to listen to specific HTTP requests like GET and POST. There are many more out there, but I will just show you how to implement this kind of logic. So here we want to import the request variable from the Flask library. And we have a route of forward slash login, and we specify the methods of GET and POST. And then we have a function login, and inside here we want to determine if it's a POST request or if it's a GET request. Based on our logic here, the default request will be a GET request. So if it is a POST request, we'll say they are logged in. But if they're just getting this page, then we'll just say that we're displaying a login page. So if we go ahead and go over to our browser and go into the login endpoint, it will display a login page. By default, the browsers will perform a GET request. If we want to send other types of requests, you can get an extension for your browser, download a client app like Postman or HTTPy, use built-in command line interfaces, or use Python's request library to submit the request. For this tutorial, we will use HTTPy. You can go to the website and download it. I will provide a link in the description. Something to note is it did give me a warning while trying to open the installer, but I just clicked more info and ran it anyways. And now that we have HTTPy open, we can see up here there is a git in all caps. If you click this, you can see the different kinds of methods we can use. For this video, we're just focusing on git and post, but we'll just leave it as git for now. And we'll come over here and we can put in our URL. So we will say HTTP colon double forward slash localhost colon 5000 forward slash login. This localhost is the equivalent of doing 127.0.0.1. So when we go ahead and send this, we can see that it does return the login page. And we'll go over here and just change this to localhost and go ahead and send again, and it does return the login page as well. Now we can come up here to this git and change it into a post and hit send, and we get the logged in. And if we go back over to VS Code, we can see that it is a post method here. It returns logged in. So going back to our previous example where we had the forward slash home route and the route of our profile with the username and page, we can dynamically build URLs using the URL4 function that Flask has built in. So we can import it up here using the Flask package. And for this home page, instead of returning hello Flask, we'll return URL4. And the first argument that you can pass to it is the name of the function of a different route. So in this case, this route is the profile. We can do show profile. So control C that and pass it as a string into the URL4. Then we'll go ahead and save it. So we go over to our browser and just go back to the home page. And we can see that there was a build error. This is because we need to pass the page and username, since those are both parameters that we have right here. If there were no parameters, it would just return us what we want to return. So after the show profile, we can pass keyword arguments. Then we can say username equals banana and go ahead and pass the page arguments. We'll say page is equal to three. We'll go ahead and save this. Let it refresh. Go back over to the browser and reload the browser. And we can see that it generated the route for us. So if we were to copy this and paste it as the route up here and press enter, we went to this specific page, page three of Banana's profile. So another cool thing with this is we can use the redirect function from Flask and we can redirect the user to this specific route built with this URL4 function. So if we take this and say redirect, open parenthesis and wrap it around. And we go ahead and save it. 
let it refresh. And if we go ahead and head back over to the home page in the browser, it redirected us to this profile banana three. So we're gonna do it again, just to show you that it is forward slash and it redirected it. And so that's a basic introduction into Flask routes and views. If you liked the video, leave a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe for more.